how he can generate 60 mils with 80 clients only. I just want really to make it clear. Pool contractors, you know, these are like super like high ticket projects. Some projects are $250,000. A lot of clients, they, they come on. We, we want to make sure they understand the value we're going to be bringing in. Hey, if I put a dollar in, can I get $7 out or $6 out? From one, seven bucks, it's not bad. It's a local lead gen. <laughs> local lead gen, yeah. Hello to everyone and welcome to our new episode of Ecom Business Stream podcast and today I have one of my friends and uh, uh, one of the leaders on the contractor sector for the marketing agencies who really done an amazing work since 2019. He has been created his agency for contractor sector and he was able to generate to his clients during these three and a half years over 60 million dollars in the active deals and close deals for his clients in such such a short period of time. It's a lead gen agency. There is no e-commerce boost, nothing. It's like really just strategies, skills of knowing what kind of creatives, what kind of offers to create for his customers were allowed him to become really successful in this space. So our, our guest today, Said Askari, and he's founder of Tech Factor Media Group and Pool Builder Marketing Pros, is a full service advertising and lead generation company. Said and his team have worked with 100 plus pool companies around, across the US. So they actually focusing exactly on the pool sector for the contractors, which is doing this kind of work on the private uh, sector. So his mission is to help contractors scale their businesses through ag aggressive and effective direct sports advertising. And I'm really excited to share with you today all the insights from such kind of direction, especially lead gen, because it's so easier than e-commerce. And if you know advertising, you really could beat this game in freaking high level. Say it, what's up, man? How's that going? What's going on? Not much, man. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm wonderful. Like, uh, I, I'm the 2023, I would say, going busy and I can't complain. I, I love the podcast. I love all the things which is happening this year completely much more packed than previous, especially like for me, previous year was kind of drama year because of the Ukrainian war, uh, becoming homeless, I mean, out of country and so on. But this year it's full of full of action and I appreciate for asking. That's awesome. I love to hear that. I didn't even know you had a podcast until we met in Denver. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, like I, I decided like it was sudden decision, like I have so many friends like you, I mean, people who I'm meeting all the time and like you guys are like successful in your industries. Why won't we share this kind of experience with the crowd, with the audience, especially uh, as we just discussed before recording, guys, Said never been on the podcast and this is first time for him. So uh, he's really excited to share the value from his end. And actually, like wh while we were talking before recordings, he already shared some story from he uh, for on his end. And I really want to go deeper into the strategies, into the results from his end, because that's something which is, in my opinion, really benefit a lot of people out there because we have different directions. We're like e-com guys, uh, different level e-com guys, six figures, seven figures, eight figures. Even Josh Snow was on the podcast and shared his incredible uh, insights of the how he's scaling his brands and investing in different areas. And like uh, as well, real estate guys, like now you are, I believe, first one in lead gen, which is weird because so many guys in lead gen and you're the first one. And that's why it's even more fabulous to listen your uh, all your background and your experience if you're ready we can start it i actually started my my journey back in 2019 like i was explaining before before we started the podcast uh, so I, I was a software engineer before that so full when the whole corporate route uh graduated here um in ung university of north georgia um got got a full-time job and uh that i was super excited about my my career about uh be, being a software engineer but turns out that's not something i I like to do um, and uh, yeah just sitting behind nine to five you know coding uh, that was just not 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 up my alley so I, I wanted to do something for myself you know something just so that I can I can be proud of that this is this is me and this is my my I have an impact on you know uh, on society um, so yeah and uh, back in yeah 2019 is uh, when I started to just like freelance you know do website development locally here in um, Alfreda Georgia um, yeah, I used to live in, in Cumming, Georgia, now, now I'm in Alfreda. So 
um, yeah, picked up just kind of like reaching out to friends and family, be like, Hey, do you know any, any local business that's, you know, just starting out or maybe looking for a website? I can, you know, kind of do that for them. So, um, did that for about probably like close to about eight or nine months. Um, had about five clients, uh, for in, in nine months. So, um, yeah, out of that, uh, about three of them were, were, were contractors actually. Um, uh, so they were super happy with, you know, the, the websites that I built, built for them. They, you know, with my, with my tech background, it was a lot easy for me to like do, do something like website design. It's like, uh, it's easy. Um, so I, I got into that and, you know, um, uh, didn't know anything about marketing, absolutely nothing, zero. Uh, but, uh, but, but the funny thing is like, you know, if you, if you started digging deeper and just like one thing and just go all in on it, you, you, you'll, you'll find your way on uh, what, what's, what's possible. And that's exactly what happened, you know, with the, with the client wanting marketing, one of the clients that I sold, it was a, he's a contractor. He's like, man, I'm struggling with leads, uh, locally here. And he was in Georgia. Uh, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling with leads. Uh, you know, if you, if you can help me out. Uh, tried a couple of different uh, other agencies. He's tried like AG's home advice. Didn't, didn't quite work out uh, for for him. So um, I, I bought a social media uh, agency course. Uh, it was mostly about Facebook ads uh, through through Jeff Miller. He's he's my first mentor. Awesome guy. Big big shout out to Jeff for for where I'm today is because of him. Uh, um, yeah, he, he taught me A to Z, Facebook ads, client acquisition, everything, how to build your agency, take, scale it up from, you know, zero to 10 K. Uh, cause that's where I was stuck. I'm like, I, I don't know how to get clients, but now I have a client. I don't know how to fulfill. Uh, it was my biggest problem. So he taught me, I'm like, uh, I would, in my head, I'm thinking Facebook ads, it's going to be so complicated. I don't know anything about it. And he made it so stupid, simple, and so easy. I'm like, that's it. That's how you get results. Uh, so yeah, it's it's just like you know those. Um, you have a lot of like br- brain trash when you're initially starting your agency. It's like a lot of limiting beliefs that like you're not going to be able to do it. Um, so I think that's where the part where I was stuck at. But uh, but yeah, that that client, I, I did not charge him anything. It was like, dude, just pay for the ad spend, and we'll see if you get results. If you do, I can charge you a monthly retainer. It's it's cool. And if, uh, if you like the results, you know, you leave me a testimonial that I can, you know, use for future. Um, dude, he paid for like $500 ad spend, uh, for, I believe for a week. And, uh, he got a lot of, leads. back in 2019, like, the yeah, cost yeah, yeah. was so, so completely low. different. Like, oh my God. <laughs> $5 leads he's getting. Uh, dude ends up selling a $96,000 project, pool project. And he was so happy. He's like, dude, like, he freaking <laughs> discovered Mars. Um, <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, ended up, you know, leaving me a really good testimony video. And that's what I started to leverage. I'm like, if I can do that for the next five clients, just work for free and get, get some results and some social proof, I can leverage that. And even I can just maybe, maybe I'm onto something here. Um, yeah, th- that was right around July, 2020. And, you know, um, around November, 2020 is when I hit my first 10 K, um, sent out a lot of cold emails, a lot of. Uh, about thousand cold emails per day is what I was doing uh, for about two three months. It was, it was exhausting, but I'm like, it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do, right? If you you really want this, uh, if you really want this to get a spin off. You don't want the nine to five. You got to do this. Uh, so I did that, and you know, uh, the the cash that I got from the first for, for five clients, I, I used that and put it in paid out so that I can you know start uh, get, getting some more leads for my agency. Um, when I hit my first 10 Ks, um, I quit my job. I'm like, that was, that was probably one of the scariest moments of my life. You know, you're, you're in COVID, people are getting laid off. You don't know what's going to happen. Even it's weird. You're making more money ever, but you still think yeah. that it's something wrong. I mean, to quit the job. I've I never know. made in my life 10 K <laughs> and I thought I'm like, I'm so fucking rich. Can I cut curse? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> All good. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, all right, cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm in my, my first 10K uh, from uh, agency. I'm like, wow, this is really where. And, you know, like, I've always wanted to, back when I had a corporate, I'm like, if I make 10K a month, I'm set for life. Uh, so that was my goal. And now that I've made it, I'm like, oh, that, that was easy. Let's look, let's do 20K. Let's, let's, try to, let, let's try to do 20K now. Let's try to do 30. Um, so November is when I quit. That was one of the scariest moments of my life. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work out or no. I've never run a business before. The only thing that I had experience was, was a job. 
Um, so I had to like really, really hone in on learning like sales. Um, le- that was probably like the first skill that, that I learned uh, because, you know, like without sales, like there's no transaction. Sure. There's like you no can't business. run a business. Without sales, no business. No business. Yep, exactly. Uh, so that was probably the, 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 the first skill that I learned. Um, when, when I started my, my, my agency, uh, and from, from there, November onwards is, is just con- consistently like improving myself, um, going, going to different events as well. And here's the thing. Um, I, I think a lot of people where, where they get stuck at is like that, you know, zero to 10, 10 to 20 K mark. Like they don't want to like spend money. Um, but you, wait, here's what you gotta do. You got, you gotta spend money, uh, to actually learn from people who, who actually have done what you're trying to do. And this concept is so easy and it was so hard for me to understand before uh, I had an agency. I'm like, I was so scared to spend like 5K uh, on something that would literally just freaking change my life. Um, I still remember like before paying Jeff, I was like, man, I said, this 5K investment is a lot. I don't know if it's going to work out or no. I'm a client that I want to del- deliver results for. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, fuck it, let's do it. Let's see. Worst case scenario, I lose 5k and I never learn anything. I'm like, all right, best case scenario, this changes, this changes, uh, you know, my, my, in my agency. Um, so yeah, um, d- just, just thinking about all that, it's, it's just kind of gives me goosebumps on like, you know, in, in two and a half years where we're, we're right now, we're serving about 81, uh, clients all across the U S and, and Canada. And, awesome. uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, not only in the pool pool industry, uh, also we're we're tapping into like hardscapes and uh, moving on to like different verticals as well in the next uh, six to eight months. Amazing, amazing, bro! Like I said, I, I want to add it something from uh, all your uh, uh, conver- from our conversation for what you are mentioning. It a uh, few points. First thing first, like your uh, you where you are today, it's not because of the mentor. He helped you out, but without you and your approach and never quit on the struggles you are here where you are i was thinking as well a couple of years ago and saying to my mentor i still working with the same mentor since 2018 and like i I'm, i was saying he's my life mentor now you know it's not about even business like real estate all that stuff and investments and this is what about what we are speaking now because he's in real estate now but the thing is that uh when we speaking uh he he was saying to me man it's because of you it's not because of me i like no man i'm here only because of you blah blah he said no 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 like yeah i'm helping you that's definitely yes I, i'm the part of that but like if you want if you would be quitting on, on the any kind of struggles which you had in the past you won't be where you are today and you have still struggles and you don't know the word quitting so that's the main point from my end that like we are where we are because of our really hard work and never quitting on the struggles we read it for struggle we have this freaking hustle muscle which is if something is happening fuck it i will manage it I'll manage it and uh, done. Like it's gonna be new things uh, uh, ahead. Like I'm ready for them. It's not fun. Sometimes it's really painful. It's it's dirty, like people love to say in US. Yeah, like messy, dirty stuff. But you have to like to take out sleeves uh, on the top and just like do the dirty stuff by yourself sometimes. And we're doing that. So like this is the first thing which I was planning to tell you because uh, that's really important. Like you man done it as uh, who you are. And the second thing that uh, what you are saying, like, I really want to ask about uh, COVID for contractors. How have you been able to make this fucking 10K in November in the middle of COVID? I mean, uh, does how that was difficult to approach some contractors during the COVID because they w- were not able to really work? Or actually it was easier because everyone else were not doing anything during COVID uh, for this sector and you like became like in front of them. What was the point there? It's funny because uh, b- before COVID, I think things, things were like pretty normal. Like not a lot of uh, contractors were uh, doing like Facebook ads or, or Google ads. Some of them did. Uh, but post COVID, you know, a lot of when things started to move like online, you know, with the lockdown, everybody's working from home. Um, they, they needed a, a different platform where they can like, 
um, advertise or put, put put their name out so they can start to generate leads. Uh, when 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 I started my agency, uh, you know, doing doing those thousand emails a day, um, I I feel like it, it was it made it a little bit easier on me in a sense because uh, the demand for home improvement projects went up um, in, in COVID since everybody's home. Um, you know, working from home, kids, kids are home because of lockdown. Um, think people start to think about like, Hey, what can I improve, um, in my backyard? Oh, hey, maybe we should get a pool. Maybe we should get an outdoor kitchen since we're going to be working from here. Might as well just do it. Right. Like, and also interest rate were so low. People were like refinancing and using that money for like home improvement projects. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, uh, home improvement sales went up a lot. And a lot of our clients were using remessing those dollars back into like marketing. Um, the second thing, upgrading their equipment, growing their company. Um, so that made it easy for when when I started to generate results. It made it easy for like for me to attract new clients. But like to to your point, what was it easy or hard? I would probably say it was easy in a sense like uh, there was a huge demand, and I was able to people uh, stuck scoop, at home scoop that and. Yeah. And this niche, it's exactly improving the home niche. Oh, yeah. fuck, yeah. Exactly. Um, the hard part was, since I was not really good with sales and I was just starting my business, um, it was a lot harder for me to, like, you know, um, doing everything from, you know, appointment setting, sales, account management, uh, you know, checking on everything. So that was kind of hard, but, like, you know, that's part of the game, right? Like, you got to really scale up. You got to take on multiple roles as a CEO uh, when you initially started because you don't have the capital to uh hire hire more people uh at that at that point um but i i feel like it was it was it was easy like you just 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 don't give up is is what i would say there were there was times where i would not make a sale like in a, in a month like you know through from july to i would say november there's been times i was like man i don't know if this is going to work out for me or not this is a lot of work like sending emails like boring stuff every day uh, I'm getting so much, so much rejection. I don't think about it. That thousand emails you send, how many people are going to say yes? One or two. I was not used to that. Um, so like, just kind of like that mindset shift was, was huge for me. And I had to just realize I'm like, it's, it's part of the game. Like you just have to do it's it. It's a sales process. Uh, there's no other way. The fun. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's, it's, it's a sales process. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I feel like it was, it was easy in a sense where the, there was, there was a lot of demand. Great. Awesome, man. I, I just realized, really, I, I wasn't thinking about that. That's a home improvement niche. It's not just contractors. It's a home improvement contractors, especially swimming pool. People stuck at home. They want to have some kind of entertainment at home. Fuck swimming pool. Why not? And especially, like, why I'm saying that, I just realized that. Because in 2020, in e-commerce, we swift uh, all the dropshipping stores uh switch from uh, general niche to home improvement niche Fa it's family niche and it was crushing it i mean all that niche we were crushing it with the fitness products for like gym at home uh like uh, kind of uh, table games for the family entertainment like kind of uh, like home cinemas all of the things which can improve their entertainment and they are like uh, physical shape while they are stuck at home and you actually exactly on that path, exactly in the same niche like family improvement niche and it's 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 amazing now you have 80 plus clients 60 mils uh, contracts closed for them i mean they were closing by themselves but you generate them those kind of leads can you tell me more about like let's go deeper now so guys will be listening exactly of the uh like strong and weak parts of the such kind of direction and agency like lead gen definitely easier than e-commerce definitely uh, able to be make it even like without the skills if you get the right course right mentor you'll find out and do that well because there is no such kind of algorithms like in e-commerce to find out the, for the conversion so what's the main uh kpis are you following for the successful offer for your customers how much time you in average does it take for you and are you using this kind of uh, uh copy paste tactics since you are in the niche with 80 plus people in the same niche you copy pasting or you always try to create the something separate and copy pasting is good i'm not trying you to, to blame you it's i'm just like it's easier that's why i want to understand more structure of how you manage in this 80 plus clients 
until now, and I can speak about like moving forward, what direction we're, we're going towards, but like until now, um, we, we, we productize everything. Like these are three different packages you can pick from, uh, A, B or C. You let me know like the amount of volume you need in, you know, like you need what? 20 leads, you want 60 leads, you want 80 leads. Like these are the three different packages and this is the ad spend you're going to be paying. Um, and that's how I've been doing it. I want to just kind of, when, when I'm scaling, I'm like, I want to make sure like things I keep simple. Otherwise, when you start to scale up, like there's a lot of like, you, you're just adding more complexity to your, to your operations. Um, so w- why add that unnecessary complexity in your, in your ops when you're scaling? Um, so when I started, I, I just kept think, things simple. I'm like, hey, people, people want leads. So guess what? We'll create a package for leads. Uh, or maybe create a higher package where not only we're going to generate leads, we're also book appointments for them. So that's our second tier package. Third would be, okay, what if they want more leads and more appointments? So that's our third tier package. Uh, so I, that's how I just kind of kept it simple. And every time on a sales call, that's how I would present it based on, you know, how, uh, it, w- what package they would be a good fit for. You know, it's a small company. It's a me- medium sized company. If they're like, uh, company that serves multi, uh, t- multiple states or they have multiple sales reps, uh, stuff like that. So until then, I just kind of like kept, kept it simple. Um, but now we're, we're going is kind of like moving towards more like a custom model, uh, being very picky with who we want to work with and working on an omnipresence. Uh, until now we've only done like Facebook ads or Google ads, uh, for, for our clients. Uh, but now we want to kind of build like a custom plan for them, you know, help them with GMB optimization, help them with SEO as well. Uh, content creation, um, also paid who ads need it? is for also- people who need it. Who need it? Yep. Um, uh, moving towards that. The, the reason why we, we made that shift is, uh, especially in the contracting space, you know, contractors are not tech savvy, right? They, all they care about is like, Hey, I need, I want, I want more jobs so I can, you know, have consistent cash flow in my, my, my business, be able to reinvest those dollars. And, uh, they don't really pay attention to like, Hey, uh, I need a solid website and good reviews. Uh, I need to make sure my, my social media is optimizing. I'm putting out content consistently. So if you're doing just paid ads, we leave a huge, uh, you know, asset that they already have, which is like their, their website, their, their Google presence. Uh, so we, I, I think that's a huge opportunity for, for us to hone in on that and help them optimize their Google presence. Because if you're running ads and there, you, you don't really have, are putting out content, guess what? That is, those leads will turn cold a lot. A lot faster um, so we want to really help them with that content creation as well um, and also like with their with their Google reviews like make sure like their, their social media presence and uh, Google presence is, is there as well awesome and can you just describe for audience uh, how, like what's the value like how he can generate 60 meals with 80 people uh, with 80 clients only and whatever I just want really to make it clear uh, like what we, what we discussed at the beginning. So basically, someone spent 1500 on the ads with you, pay you, let's say, a couple of grand for the service. And at the end, uh, if he close at least from one single lead, 100K, 40K, 50K const- contraction deal for the swimming pool, done. Like he's in huge profit and like he spent on you only like in total 5K, maybe even less with the ads. And uh, this is how they making money. And this is why you have to do that because one lead can make the care bank for the, uh, for your client. Am I right? hundred uh, percent. Yeah. So with, with, especially with the pool contractors, you know, these are like super like high ticket projects ranging anywhere from 70K uh, to like hundred plus thousand, some, some projects of 200 Two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. So it really depends on like what what area uh, the the customer is in. You know what type of market they're serving. Low income, high income areas. But majority of our, our, our clients are like you know Georgia, Texas, Florida, uh, California. These are like super Arizona, uh, super hot state, states for 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 pools. Uh, but yeah, you're you're right. You know, like they uh, a lot of clients they they come on. We want we want to make sure they understand like hey. Uh, what what are we going to be doing the value we're going to be bringing in and like hey the roi at the end of the day it's all about like hey if i put a dollar in can i get seven dollars out or six dollars out from from this marketing so we really not bad. <laughs> seven bucks from one seven bucks it's not bad it's a local legion <laughs> local legion yeah 
Uh, so I really put in on that, like, hey, you spend like three k, four k on 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 advertisement, and your average cost or average pool is like let's say seventy thousand. You make a twenty grand profit. Think about like if you sell one pool a month, you you put in five k, get twenty k out in profit. Um, or, you know, minus the advertisement cost that's 15 K that's, it's not bad. I mean, like you do that for and three it's months, only you, one client, uh, one, one client. And once you start to do it at scale, that's, that's a huge impact on, you know, like a lot of contractors and some of the clients, you know, I've, I've talked to them, like they feel like we've changed their life because they were just stuck at like one revenue mark. Like they can't even cross 700 K, 800 K. And then we just like start generating leads. Um, we, we help them with like even sales as well. Like sometimes, um, I don't know if I mentioned, we also do sales coaching calls uh, on a weekly basis for our clients. So our best performing clients, we invite them, they talk about their best practices on how they close these deals. So clients that are struggling, that's an opportunity for them to hop on those calls and learn about sales. Um, so some of our clients that are struggling, I'm like, hey, let's generate leads. Um, if you're struggling with sales, let's hop on these calls and then we can help you. They, they scale to millions. Uh, 1.5 million in 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 revenue. It's yeah. <laughs> you you can really dominate your uh, niche by have your own podcast with some of your most successful cases and speak about your niche and sub niches to that and invited guests who are your clients and plus who is uh, like ex experienced people in the same area or other agencies even competitors and that could be really domination of your brand as an agency your own uh, name you can really make it huge branding and actually uh, the huge contractors which you are looking for they will find you out because they're listening their internal niche uh, information base uh, uh, like uh, podcasts YouTubes and so on this is something what you can really dominate by the providing valuable content by speaking to your customers and like keep that in mind it just came idea this right now because I see that you I, have I love niche, that idea you have 80 yeah. customers let's say not all of them already making great because like it takes time for sure but let's say majority of them you already have 50 plus uh, pod, uh, podcast episodes for for one year over a year of recording and after that people will be knocking to you to ask you can i record with you but this is what happened to us we are only four months in the in the space and people already asking hey can we record can we be, be guests on your so that's that's what i'm saying to you think about that seriously especially like as your team run right now in remote if you open office there is no excuses you have to do this i mean it's just my my opinion i have something to ask you according to uh what you said like and okay guys like listening awesome like fuck i will start my agency i will be like making one lead which is gay make my client uh, 40k so first thing uh, before i will ask the question i will make clarification i used to run as well lead gen back in 2018 when i was testing out ecom everything whatever related to facebook i as well watching the Ty Lopez program and like for legion local legion i found, found, was walking and knocking uh, in the different uh, coffee shops small restaurants in dubai uh, i was just like uh, i understand that i'm living in dubai i'm in e-commerce but i need to get some kind of customers to be like to leave for some money while my store is growing you know and like i, f I found out one of my friends just opened a beauty salon and it's amazing we made instantly like such a huge growth first month's profitability she was shocked because she just opened it and like she has queue of the people to stay uh, but i would say difference uh, for the guys uh, what i just mentioned one dollar spent seven made it's just because it is the high ticket product if you're uh, gonna be an uh, approach advertising of uh, making advertising for beauty salons or like nails or whatever it's a super low ticket it's gonna be hard for them to pay your fee to pay advertising and being profitable they have to be really and they don't have human capa capacity to get all that work to be able to be profitable and pay you so be careful with choosing the niche uh, this is just my advice for everyone out there and according to that like when you start working with the customer okay we're gonna spend x y z we're gonna bring you we're gonna be bring you new contracts is there a problem that let's say they become fully packed and they saying to you stop marketing we stop working for now for three months or whatever because we are busy we don't have enough uh, labors or another uh, similar question or similar situation hey like uh, i don't have enough uh, labors i really don't want to join because i won't be able to get more work like how do you deal with that 
And if is it happening? Yeah, hundred percent. This is uh, since I started my agency when uh, in uh, back in twenty twenty. It wasn't it wasn't a big issue because we didn't have that many clients. Uh, but like it, moving into twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, we we saw that you know some of the clients that were absolutely crushing it, they would do it like three three months and they'll get booked out and they'll start their marketing back in twenty twenty two. They're like, hey, we're we're three months in, we got booked out. So from 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 case study standpoint, that looks amazing, man. We got a client booked out in three months uh, for like an agency standpoint. I'm like, wow, like we got to really solve this problem, uh, like for you know for for us. So what we what we end up doing is like for for new clients coming in, we really like want to make sure they can take the volume, and if once they get the volume, they're able to scale up, like by either hiring or they have the capacity that. They can consistently take on more jobs um, with with the pools. It's it's just the name of the game is like with, with the project takes on an average about four to six months, right? Like depending on um, you know supplies backlog on um, like pool shells if they're doing fiberglass pools. Um, so like just just the entire sales process it's long and they can they can only install so many so many pools in a year um so we we really want to like now when we take on a client we really work with like clients that have the mind the growth mindset like hey even if we've taken on more we ha- we want to tap into other markets let's say we let's say we have a client in nashville he's like hey um i'm doing awesome in nashville we have the crews to to build these pools let's do it in knoxville now let's open another camp in knoxville let's do it in huntsville alabama let's do it in uh, maybe chattanooga uh, stuff like that so we really look for like clients that are that are, have the growth minded and want to really grow their 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 business and also another thing that's really important um here is like with, with especially with contractors they, they yeah it, it, it's part of the game they get booked out uh, but I'm, I'm happy they got but that means we we delivered what we promised to them uh, I look for like, hey, what other problems can I solve for them? Now we hop on a call, like, hey, what can I help you with? Hey, man, I'm really booked out. I'm still getting leads, but I don't have anyone to handle these leads. Uh, would you like us to book these uh, appointments for you? So you just like show up on the onsite visit. Okay, guess what? Now I can have our team book these appointments for our clients, or maybe they don't have a sales rep. Maybe I'm like, okay, we can do a hiring campaign through Facebook ads, get you a sales rep. So you are out of uh, the sales and somebody else can do it while you uh, manage your job sites. So I'm always like talking to clients and trying to see like what other problems uh, I can solve for them in their, uh, in their, in their business. Uh, Cause it's not, business is not just about sales or, or just marketing. There's a lot that goes in like even operations back in fulfillment, uh, right? Like, so we want to make sure like we, we, we not only solve like one, their lead problem or lead generation problem, we want to solve other problems as well. And that, that's how we, you know, are like, I feel like it goes a long way because it builds a strong relationship with, with clients. It's like, Hey, this is not just like a vendor who generates leads, uh, but someone I can go to like for, to solve any, any of my problems. So, which is why I introduced the concept of, uh, weekly coaching calls where they not only talk about sales, sometimes, you know, the, the topic is about, profit margins or the topic is about like, Hey, I'm struggling with this person in my company. Uh, how do I keep them accountable or people not showing up to do job sites? What can I do? I might not be the right person to answer that because I've never owned a construction company, but guess what? There's other clients who are absolutely crushing it, done millions of dollars and been through what the other person's going. They can provide value in the call and solve that problem for them. Uh, so, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, the the so main point is pre qualification before they join into you. If they, if it's a good fit to to, be, to have the longer lifetime with them, and the second thing is just like educating them on the goal, how to scale. So they, they you have to shift their mind into something which is like they will understand. Fuck, I have now leads. Now I need just expand the team, expand the uh, equipment, expand everything to be able to get more projects. Uh, like yeah, it makes sense. Can you tell me, please, 
uh, again, uh, one thing which we haven't been answered yet, you mostly, like because it's the same niche, you just duplicate in what's working for other clients, but for different areas where the next client located. And it's making really easy work, or there is still struggles in terms of optimizing with the same stuff which is already working for previous client. I will explain this question because like in e-commerce, if working for one store, it doesn't mean that for second store it will be working as well. And I I'm really wondering about the lead gen. If it's working for the one client, does it work for another 79 clients or no? It does. Uh, we have the same uh, framework on ads. Like we, we got a, we have one offer that works really well for, for, for our clients. So we, we use that offer, you know, for across the board. Uh, the only thing that we change is like the creatives. We got to, you know, with Facebook ads, you got to constantly change creatives. So I like to, with Legion, that's the beauty, right? Like you got to keep things simple. I'm like, that's just, Fuck, that's when it's the golden line. <laughs> And across the board. Uh, so we, that's, that's what I do. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes it might not work and we just, we just have to like tweak, tweak things a little bit on, on the ads maybe. Uh, but overall we, we like to keep things the same way. We consistently test out new ad copies. If an ad copy is working for this client, Hey, let's test it out in another client. But, uh, overall same ad copy, um, creatives, all that stuff is safe. That, that's awesome man. I mean I was hoping to hear this answer seriously because like uh, one of my media buyers when I announced them listen guys we're gonna be moving to the lead gen uh, space and I, I really trying to figure it out how to make it I really want to get uh, strong partners in the area which we want to go to so and that will be much smarter to do than learning to by ourselves from scratch the structure of the lead gen but when I said to one of my media buyers he like fuck yeah like because here like in e-commerce we are scientists we trying to make some formula some strategy which is we'll be finding out the right algorithm right product right creative right offer and hope that it will be alive for long which is obviously not we have to again make adjustments it's so difficult work and then legion i remember even with the beauty salon it was so easy you launched it's working and you just like don't do nothing i mean <laughs> nothing like completely it's, thank god i'm not an e-com <laughs> <laughs> exactly no it, it, it's it's cool can you tell me please okay like for example i'm construction company you like uh, get from me details for my facebook page uh, how what will be the targeting what will be your way of running the first campaign for local construction company i'm construction company from uh minfield ohio so like small city like what you're gonna be doing in this case how you're gonna run the ads for this particular client yeah so fa facebook uh, first what i would do is i'll keep things simple do a broad broad targeting like cast a net and everybody in, in your area um ad copy and creative will, will how big the area would you and, take 25 will, miles 50 miles uh, we start off with about 25 to 30 miles. Um, it really depends on the clients. Some clients don't really want to travel like 50 miles. Mm -hmm. They're like, Hey, I'm, I'm happy doing 30, 35. We always try to like ex try to expand their serviceable area. Like, Hey, if you're doing 20, why not 30? You know, there's more, there's many more opportunities for you. Uh, so usually we try to go for 25, 30 miles and, and start off with like broad and we, we, we have in interest based targeting as well. Like where, you know, someone interested in home improvement or, uh, pool, swimming pool, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but majority broad, broad straight broad, so broad. people mm -hmm. from the age of 30 to 65, uh, put in $50 ad spend and cast a net, get some leads. $50 ad spend per day uh it's one ad set or several ad sets with different creatives so one ad set with several creatives what's the structure in here we usually do two ad sets 25 each uh so one ad set one ad and then another ad set with one ad and then split it 25 dollars 25 dollars so one two creatives at the beginning to see if they work okay. yeah two creatives with a proven ad copy and proven the structure of the it's yeah. usually a static picture or video uh usually majority of the time we do uh Creative, just single image. Uh, with clients with high spend, we 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 tap into videos as well. We do. We ask them like, "Hey, can you give some videos as well?" So we use videos as well. Awesome. So fifty bucks a day running. Uh, so it's lead. Obviously, it's a leads. Uh, collect co co the campaign objection. It's collecting the leads. Is it uh, like uh, collecting leads uh, by filling up the form on the Facebook, or it's sending the, to the to the website? 
or it depends on the client? Yeah, so um, we used to do lead forms on, on Facebook. Recently, we started to tap into survey funnels. So now we, we create a generic landing page for, for a client and have, have uh, the leads fill out a small for survey, you know, like name, email, phone oh, number, like a type form. Their budget, all that. Like, well, yeah, like what, kind, what kind of scope of work, what yeah. they're looking for, what is yeah. their budget. Okay, okay. Yeah, just so that we can kind of improve the lead quality a little bit. But uh, initially, when I started off, kept things super simple, instant lead form or a messenger campaign from there, we'll, we'll follow the leads into go high level CRM. That's the CRM I use. Um, and just notify our clients, hey, you got a new lead. Okay, so in this case, uh, you're, you're running like, let's say on the landing page, people are booking a call means. At the end of the, the goal of this uh, question reform, it's going to be book a call with uh, one of his uh, appoint, uh, who is going to be one of his salespeople. Am I right? On local biz, they have yeah. salespeople as well. Yeah, so they, they fill out the, uh, the type form and then the client gets notified through text like, hey, you just got a new lead and they'll call the person uh, and then book a call, like you said. Uh, also, we like some of the... Wait, sorry, sorry, just like... At the end uh, of the form, client choose the time and the uh, salesperson calling him back or because of the like schedule of the call or the client just leave his details and salesperson calling him and trying to make the appointment for the call. So when somebody fills out, let's say a lead fills out an instant form, right, on, on, on the survey funnel, they, as soon as they hit submit, the, we have a trigger and notify the client that, hey, you just got a new lead. This is their contact info. Call them. Okay. They'll call them and then the client will book a call. But if a client is like on a higher tier plan, they're like, hey, I, I don't have time. I want you guys to book a call. Uh, so we add after somebody submits the form, it's a, it's a thank you page where they can book an appointment for a client. So that way, either client gets an appointment book uh, automatically through that landing page. Uh, or our team will call them and qualify and book them on their calendar. Oh, nice. Well, so it's, it depends on the client. So oh, depends on the client. Okay, that's cool because I was thinking how complicated is that. This is only one small thing which has made me always uh, overthinking about it. What should it be done? Like professional landing page, questionnaire, or like a messenger? Who gonna be if it's messenger? Who is gonna be like answering on another side if client is like has uh, labors to manage and so on? So I'm just overthinking that I got it. I got it. <laughs> Gotta keep it simple. <laughs> nice, bro. Like, yeah, it's how many times you said about keeping simple. That's exactly about the lead gen and about anything. It has to be more simple to make things uh, working better. That's cool, bro. Uh, okay, so the, the strategy understandable. Tell me, please, realistically speaking, what's the LTV on such kind of direction for your customers? Is it couple of months? Is it one year? Is it couple of years? You're already three years on the market, so you can say, uh, what's the realistic number if you have this analytics on your mind? On an average, I've seen like agencies um, in, in the contracting space have about four to five months LTV. Ours is anywhere from 5.5 to uh, seven months right now. Amazing. Um, some clients have been with us for two years uh, working with us since I started my agency. Um, so they've been they've been with us for, for a long time. They, and uh, yeah, new clients that are coming in on an average, they stay about uh, four, four to six months on, on an average uh, working with us. Um, and then also some of the clients that we work with, let's say somebody is doing pool campaign, right? Like they're like, hey, I want leads for just pools. Um, but we also do uh, campaigns for, for hardscapes as well. So we, we try to like either cross sell them on, on hardscape, like, hey, no, we got you leads on pools. Why don't we also get you leads on this this program as well? And that that's that's our strategy, you know, right around three, three month mark. Uh, we want to cross sell them and then try to get lock in, lock them in on another three months for on, on a hard skip campaign. Awesome. Uh, and uh, these leads which you you generating for one customer, are you testing out after that, uh, you know, like lookalikes for other customer or retargeting for the this kind of custom so audience who were leaving their information on the type form? Uh, are yeah, are you 100%. doing something? Like you do. Doing? Okay. We do page view retargeting, uh, and we also oh, do page view is retargeting. Seriously? Page, yeah. Oh, okay. Page view, yeah. In Ecom, I hate that kind of way, like really never seen the luck, but uh, I believe yeah, with Legion, it's super cheap. Yeah. And uh, it, that is uh, easier to get the action from that person because again, it's just a goal. Again, book a call. Correct. This is only mm -hmm. one. Yep. That's it. Nice, man. Like that, that's awesome. I mean, 
31 person in the team, 80 customers. Uh, oh, by the way, how many media buyers do you have? We just hired our third media buyer, but until then we had two. Third? Uh, each handling 40. Third, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what until, other people are doing? <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah, so each, each person handling 40 accounts, so 40, and then uh, other media buyers handling 40. And then my third media buyer is mostly for my agency ads. Uh, where he's just kind of helping with my agency client acquisition um, paid ads on Google and, and Facebook uh, with me. It's insane, bro. Like in e-commerce, like in my end, I'm not giving more than seven customers because it will be overwhelmed. Really? It will be overwhelmed. I mean, yeah. before I was giving 15 and I noticed that when we reduced the amount of the numbers of the customers up to 10 and after that even up to 8 maximum, quality, drops. Qual qual quality increase when we decrease the quantity. Really? Decrease. Yeah. We, we, and like I was like, wow, wow. Like seriously, I want them to manage more. And now we have like almost, I guess, 16 media buyers plus managers. So 19 people in total. Yeah. And this is majority of the, the majority part of the company. But like... Uh, Two media buyers managing 40 each. Man, that's insane. That's really insane. That's, that's a golden mine. That's a cool stuff. And really, guys and girls, if like we are 40, 45 minutes, uh, like quite longer than usually on the, on the call. And if you were listening it and you have skills, you have experience and maybe idea or father or mother in some space, but like uh, that you like understanding that, wow, I can help my parents. Like I know so, so many of my friends who start in their uh, legion companies from uh, like help my father, help my mother. Even Eddie Malou from Four Media, he started, he just like give a shot to his father uh, business and it's like blow up. It's blow up in 2014 when he just launched the Legion companies and he was still like using him as a guinea pig, his own father, and it's made them like really inter expand a huge one. I mean, really multiple X's. So that's why I'm saying that uh, if you have marketing skills and you have idea in front of you, like parents, sisters, whatever, like use that, test it out. I mean, it's good for them. It's not bad for them for sure. You won't be charging them, but it will be great for you, the test-wise stuff. That's why I now I understand why 2017, 2018 was such a huge years for SMM agencies. Uh, it was insanely growth of the SMM around because it's so kind of easy, but- easy. Uh, no barrier to entry. No, no, no much that stress, I would say. And so, so much of great reviews. I mean, really su such a, such a good quantity of reviews for sure. Bro, you have to, you have to make your brand louder, make the podcast, YouTube, whatever it is, or live streams, like uh, weekly live streams for the people who are in the industry. Uh, that, that's a killer. I mean, you, you on your end is just imagination, uh, could push, push you forward. Seriously. I really love to to hear this uh, to see this episode and hear from you your experience. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Uh, you know, in the next uh, few few months, we definitely want to you know help help more people out. You know, in other verticals as well, not just just pools and hardscapes. Um, so that that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, like you said, podcast is something I never thought about. But now you brought it up, I think I think we should probably move in that direction. Uh, that'll be cool yeah <laughs> definitely like uh, it, it sounds like a really we have you have guests on your end different sizes of the construction companies with different struggles on their end what's their minuses what's their pluses what was the difference for them when you came on the board especially customer who join you from the third day number one if it's still available there it's amazing it's such a huge for you trust wise episode that you start step by step getting reach out to by other construction because like fuck this is what he does for them and they won't understand even that it's quite the copy paste format they will understand that no he's a magician because i've never been in online space and this guy like just doing something magic online so let's go to him i mean that, that that's that's the thing about the local legion awesome bro like uh, i have one thing uh, last uh, to ask you because usually uh, at the end we ask uh, everyone the same question and i'm really wondering how you would answer on that so what would you choose the uh journey or end result i would say journey before i used to i used to go for the end results i'm like this is what i want and until i get this i'm not going to be satisfied um i was not happy with that outcome until i get that outcome i'm not going to be happy 
Um, so that for me, I feel like you got to enjoy the journey more than the outcome uh, in, in, in life. So now every day I'm like, even if I don't hit that outcome right away, I will someday, but I want to enjoy the process getting to that outcome. Uh, that's just to make myself happy and give me that peace. Uh, so that's why I really like uh, the, the journey more than the outcome now. I love your answer and explanation. I appreciate it, man. So, Saeed, if you have anything to share with the audience, maybe where they can reach out to you, maybe some of them uh, are in construction at the same time with e-commerce or their parents. Like, if you have something to share from your end, please feel free. Yeah, I think uh, the best way to reach out to me would be IG. Uh, yeah, my handle is uh, saeed.iskari14. Um, yeah, reach out to me, shoot me a DM and we'll be happy to chat with you. Awesome. And we will be added all the links uh, under our episode. So guys and girls, if you would like to reach out to say it, uh, there is going to be under our episodes, all the links and uh, feel free to do that. And definitely like I enjoyed the, pro- the process of our conversation. And guys, if you have any kind of questions, please ask. We will try to give you a response on all of them. I will personally ask say it to like respond on them. And at the same time, maybe we're going to be recorded in three six months another episode where like uh, he will have more to share about the new niches which they are opening for themselves and we can speak more and more about that i do appreciate for having time to join our episode today said and really wish you good luck and speak to you soon thanks for having me man thank you